Hello and welcome to day four of our virtual pilgrimage. If you remember, we were still on the morning of day one of the actual pilgrimage, even though we're now on day four, and we had walked down the Mount of Olives and we then came to this beautiful, tranquil garden of Gethsemane. You can see there, there were um, quite a few olive trees and one at least had carbon dating, dating it to 300 years before Christ. So it is perfectly possible that some of the trees here were the trees that were in this place at the time when Jesus came here the night before he died. It was a very calm place. There were no souvenir shops allowed. And um, as you'll see as we come to the church there, there were big signs about being silent and people were observing that. So say so you came in and this was the first thing you saw, these uh, trees. And then you came round the corner and there was this enormous church with an amazing mosaic on the top. Um, depicting the scene on what we now call Maundy Thursday. As I said, that, that actually isn't my picture. We didn't have as many crowds as that when we were there. That is the inside of the church and the um, rock surrounded there by a, um, a metal railing depicting the crown of thorns is a rock that tradition says is where Jesus knelt and prayed on that night. The entrance door there with the big silent sign, which I, I really appreciated and people did really keep to that. I thought that was a beautiful um, metalwork depiction of olive trees. And the picture on the and the other side is the picture that is above the altar in the church. It was after we'd been to that church, it's a moment on the pilgrimage that I remember very clearly, that I sat down on one of the benches outside and I looked at my watch and discovered it was only 11 o'clock in the morning on day one. And I remember turning to Tom and saying, you know, I could go home happy now. I have seen so much and my idea of so many parts of the Holy Land has already been formed. And as I say, it was 11 o'clock on day one and there was so much more to see as the next 10 days panned out. It was a very, a very poignant moment for me when I knew that already my ideas of, of visualizing the Bible had changed. And so we begin our worship for today. In the name of the searching father, in the name of the servant son, in the name of the purging spirit, in love's name, the three in one. Amen. On this day, as we remember the Saviour's passion, let us be one with him in his wounds. We seek to tread in the steps of Christ. In the steps of Christ, our champion and king. He has shown us the way when strong, when weak. He is our master in everything. And part of Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. 
I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. And a time of confession. May I weep for pride and loose talk. May I weep for the blame heaped on others. May I weep for things I clutch at. Strip from me, O oh God, pretense and divided loyalties, grudges and compulsive habits, unloving relationships, self-sufficient attitudes. May we weep for our hollow society. May we weep for neglect and brutality. May we weep for blighted lives. May Holy Jesus pardon us for these sins, free us from these evils, and power us into new ways. Amen. We come to Matthew's account of the scene in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Wait here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer.
Sorry about that. Normally, in our church calendar, this incident in Gethsemane is part of a weekend of reading great chunks from the Gospels about what happened at the Last Supper, the various trials that Jesus went through leading eventually to his crucifixion. It is easy, therefore, to lose sight of each individual part. And so it's good to be able to focus on just this time of heartfelt prayer by Jesus as he thought about what was to come. I've just read a book called God on Mute by Pete Grieg, the founder of the 24-7 prayer movement. And he is looking there at our experiences of unanswered prayer and uses this story, this time of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane as part of his reasoning about prayers which seem to be unanswered. It is a powerful book and one I would recommend. We are living at this time at a moment of great need and hardship around the world where it does seem as if many of our prayers are unanswered. Many are praying with tears and great anguish, just as Jesus did. But throughout his prayers, the thing that strikes me is that he is always praying, thy will be done. Not as I will, but as you will. Jesus knew what he was facing. He knew what the end would be. But this very human reaction was to shrink from all that was ahead. And so he cried out to God, his father, in tears and anguish. And it made me think that it is very rare that my prayer time reduces me to tears or anguish. But those are the prayers of the real heart. So often my prayers are mundane and superficial. I'm happy to pray that God's will be done when it doesn't cost me a vast amount in time or effort. But to pray that God's will be done through hardship and pain is very different. I have no glib answers and I don't think we should look for them. But I do know that God, our Heavenly Father, does care for us as we thought about yesterday and that his love and care does not change or alter. And we simply have to trust him. The music I've chosen for today is what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. And when we think about what he went through on that night in prayer, it does help us to realise that he is the one to turn to in our grief and our uncertainty and our anguish. So let us pray. Christ of the scars, into your hands we place the broken, the wounded, the hungry and the homeless. Christ of the scars, into your hands we place those who have been bereaved or betrayed, those who have suffered loss of health or esteem, family or friends, employment or home. Christ of the scars, into your hands 
we place unwanted babies, children abused, neighbours defamed, lovers spurned, spouses deserted. Christ of the scars, into your hands we place those who are victims of violence or vandalism, false accusation or sharp practice. Lord of the scars, we entrust them all to your loving care. Amen. Father, in the life of Jesus, you have shown us the way. Give us his spirit of self-discipline. Lead us more deeply into the way of the cross. Before his hands were stretched out on the cross, they were stretched out in love to children, men and women. May your way of the cross be our way that we too may stretch out our hands in love to all. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me on this next part of our pilgrimage. After that amazing morning, we went on to have lunch in a beautiful um, Christian guest house. And then in the afternoon, we, we rewound, and we'll be looking at this tomorrow, rewound to the beginning of the story of Jesus and just after the Annunciation. So be prepared tomorrow to go back to the beginning of, of the story. <laughs>